Um, how did this one come your way? What, how did you make the decision uh, to get involved with the GT4? You, you sort of, you gave a little spills there earlier as to why maybe this particular car, but let's hear a little bit more about that. <laughs> it's uh, pretty romantic, actually. Uh, no. Uh, you actually spoke yesterday when I first met you that you, you have a customer that has a, a Miami Blue GT4, yes. and that actually is the car that inspired me to get one. So I actually saw it here at Ace, that specific blue car. And, uh, you know, Por I've always, like I said, Porsche's been on the radar, but um, the Cayman to me was never really that exciting, right? I mean, it was more the entry level into the Porsche range. Um, but the more you learn about it and the more you can really appreciate what it is, right? And, and the GT4 is just the extreme of that. Um, and once again, talking about the driving experience, having the mid-engine um, was something very special uh, to me. Because once again, I, I drove a 911 as my first Porsche. And uh, the first time you feel lift oversteer, um, <laughs> you quickly you know, learn to realize that, it, yes, it's a driver's car, but it's very different. You know, It's a completely different driving experience. I, I do it quite a few track days, not only on the bikes, but in cars as well. And uh, they're tricky to drive. And, and that's what's interesting, right? It, it makes it, keeps you on your toes. Right. Um, but yeah, so the mid-engine, to me, was a very nice blend between having Porsche engineering, but in something that was a little bit more balanced, right? Yeah. So it's no secret that, you know, the, the 911 design is certainly a handicap. Um, they happen to make it work. I mean, it's the fastest car in the world around a racetrack right now, the GT2 RS, but uh, that's with a handicap, right? That's with one hand tied behind their back, basically. So for them to make something mid-engine um, with the kind of pedigree they have and the engineers they have was very interesting to me, right? Because ideally, the weight should be in the center, right? Not hanging over the rear axle. So uh, that was the first thing that caught my eye about the Cayman. Um, but then you you can have a Cayman with GT3 parts, basically. You know, the, the suspension, everything, the front clip. I mean, it it has a lot of GT3, GT911 uh, components, but on that mid-engine. So, and it's limited. It's special, you know. And yeah. For the price, for the value, I'm a huge fan on value, right? I, I can't afford the, you know, quarter of a million, half a million dollar GT2 or what, you know, whatever they might be. So, um, yeah, it was just, it made sense. You know, if I wanted to get something cool, this was it. And I, like you said earlier, we're talking off air a little bit about being patient. Um, I had to be patient for this one because uh, basically if I was going to spend that kind of money, uh, it needed to be something that, you know, I was that I liked, obviously. Yeah. So I I didn't have the opportunity to, to get one when they were new. Um, as you know, they were pretty hard to come by. You, you kind of had to be invited to buy one. And at the time, I was nowhere in the market for one. So um, the goal was to find one that would be how I was going to build it, right? So if I had the opportunity to, to order one from scratch, this would be it. So starting with the color, GT Silver. It's a iconic color. I mean, German Motorsports the history behind that color and what it represents. To me, I, I, I'll always have a Porsche in my garage until the day I die and it will always be GT Silver. Um, just because it's cool, I mean, there's a story behind it. And then, uh, I, I can talk about this all day. Keep, let me know if I'm <laughs> Well, no, you know, so th the GT Silver, I mean, yeah. that's it. I mean, I have plenty of people who come into the dealership and they ask me, you know, what are, what are some cool colors? You know, what do you think? And I say, it doesn't get any cooler or any more full of heritage for Porsche than a GT Silver car. Yeah. When you look up on the board and you see the first Gamund, you know, 356 in 1948, it was GT Silver. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has that long uh, tradition and long heritage. Yeah. So, all right, so you, you found the car, your dreams, and now you're enjoying it. Yeah. Um, just tell us briefly before we have to move on to our next guest, but tell us a little bit how you are enjoying it. Are, are you driving it both on the street and the track? And maybe what's one uh, extra cool thing that you've done with it recently? Yeah, so it's it's kind of my every everything car, right? So uh, I, as much as I don't say I daily drive it, I end up getting in it more often than not. You know, I just I drive it to work. You know, I go get groceries in it. Um, but at the same time, it's my weekend car. You know, I'm planning a trip up to Deals Gap, Hill the Dragon uh, later this summer. I'll drive it there. Um, mileage on it does not concern me whatsoever. It probably should from a resale standpoint, but. You know, once again, we talked earlier about kind of what my next car was going to be, and yeah. I, I'll probably just get another something else. You yeah. know, I'll probably always have it. Um, but yeah, it's also my track car. I try to get out to the track 
every other month, something like that, oh, um, and get it on the track. And you know, I just put a six-point harness in it, which definitely helps uh, when you're driving on the track. And uh, it's full bolt-on, so it's, it's a little obnoxiously loud, which I like. Um, <laughs> you can hear it. Uh, intake, tune, that kind of thing. But you know, one of the coolest parts about this car to me was that when you buy it, you really don't have to do anything yeah, to it. And there. that's that's what's yeah. also interesting yeah. to, about yeah. Porsche with me is you buy it and it's ready to go. Yeah. I mean, it has adjustable coilovers from the factory, carbon ceramic brakes. It's, you know, it's not a super fast car, but that's also why I like it, you know, because you can actually drive it. Yeah, you can, and, and that's what's the cool thing about Porsche. Uh, we spoke with Hurley Haywood out at the Festivals of Speed this year and uh, talked to him about, you know, what's your favorite Porsche and that kind of stuff. And he, he brought that very fact up that you just said, you know, Porsche is the only make, a car that you can actually take that car that came from the factory, take it to the track, just slog on it all day long, hammer on it, have a blast, drive it off the track, and drive it home, and not have any issue whatsoever. Um, you know, it makes the transition simply, and uh, you know, in, it's just it's unbelievable in that way. Well, I tell you what. Um, first of all, I wanted to say thanks for you know coming on with us. It was yesterday that we met for the first time. And, uh, you know, as soon as I started to mention that, hey, I got a slot, I got an opening, and, y you know, you were all in. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, you know, having the conversation and, and sort of the, the Porsche Fellowship out here tonight. I'm sure that there's plenty of people who are really enjoying looking at your car out here. I can tell you that for sure. And you met this, the six-point harness, harness. That's probably a big transition for a motorcycle guy, right? Like, you didn't have to deal with any of that when you're, when you're riding bikes, right? Yeah, I mean, on a bike, you you know, you're you're moving around a lot. So, in a, you know, when you're strapped into the car, that is very odd, yeah. right? I mean, it's all here and on your feet. So, yeah. but it's the only way that it happens. You know, in a car like this, it's got the performance, it's got the braking. You couldn't stay in the seat unless you had your harnesses on. So, it's the only way you can drive the car, yeah. right? All right, well, Michael, uh, again, thanks so much for coming out, uh, talking with us, sharing the Porsche passion with us. Such a such a great thing to to have people just jump in the seat and uh, and feel comfortable like you do. I uh, want to wish you all the best uh, at Eurocycles. I'm sure you guys got a lot of cool stuff going on over there all the time. So I want to tell people, you know, go see Michael and his team at Eurocycles, whether it be here at Ace Cafe or the other stores. You can find all their information on EurocyclesOfOrlando.com. Is that correct? We have multiple websites, but the easiest would be uh, EurocyclesCentralFlorida.com. Okay. Yeah, or CF. Um, okay. But yeah, from there you can. Wherever you live across Central Florida, we, we have you covered. So, and we can follow you on social media too, probably on Instagram or those those things. Well, under the same uh, same brand. Yeah, just look up Eurocycles; it'll pop up. Okay, all right, great. All right, well, thanks, Michael. I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, we have another guest coming on uh, just in a moment. Michael, you're going to pull the car out, so everyone's going to get treated to a little a little start up here, and you and you fly out of here before we have our next guest on. So, thanks again for coming on. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. No yeah, no wheelies. I don't know, man. It's his car. It's whatever he wants to do. You know, he's a responsible guy. All right. Well, I'm going to back up right here so we can get, you know. So we're going to bring on Chris Mealy now from Porsche South Orlando. And uh, Chris, I'm going to come down and join us. So Chris is going to come on, and this is the car that he drove out.